As you know, Serbia lost this year its status of free country due to increasing pressure on independent media. How do you comment that? No, I think this is a disturbing trend that we've seen in a number of countries uh, in the region. It's not just limited to Serbia or even to the Balkans. We've seen EU member states also uh, backslide in this area. We've seen independent media under assault uh, in a number of countries. In part, that's why Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty has uh, restarted a number of its services that we had ended in the years following uh, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. We've relaunched in Romania and Bulgaria. Next year, we'll be relaunching a service in Hungary. Uh, and so I think it's a disturbing trend, and it ultimately has the impact of undermining democracy because when the media is uh, persecuted in this way, is threatened in this way, government is lacking that independent check on their actions. Uh, it's much more difficult for, in, for average citizens to challenge government officials uh, if you don't have the media playing a role in, in doing some of that challenging and asking tough questions, pursuing uh, tough investigations about uh, government decisions or government corruption. I'm very worried about this trend. And I think we at Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty, play an important role in all of the places we operate, including here in Serbia, of being that independent media without a political bias, without political loyalties. And we're hoping to continue to fill some of that space when other media are unable to fulfill that function. In my conversations during my time here, I've expressed my concern about these developments, including to, to government officials, and had some frank conversations uh, about the need for uh, the government to also engage journalists more uh, and to provide access uh, to journalists uh, who are interested in, in uh, fulfilling their duty of asking tough questions of uh, elected leaders. Thomas Jefferson, the U.S. founding father and the third president of the United States, a man who was, as we know, vilified almost daily by newspapers, summed it up best the significance of media freedom when he said, if I had to choose between government uh, without newspapers and newspapers without government, I wouldn't hesitate to choose the latter. If he were alive today, would he be truly horrified to see such amount of pressures coming from authoritarian governments to independent media. Yeah, I'm glad you raised that quote because it's one I've, I've used many times myself uh, as well, including in my first several months in, in this job. I think the fact that he was talking about this debate about uh, pressure on the media tells you that this is a challenge that has been around for centuries, that leaders have often not appreciated being questioned in the way that the uh, that, that good journalists are supposed to be challenging them and uh, asking probing questions. I worked in American politics uh, briefly. I worked for political figures. I've seen it from that perspective. I understand uh, politicians who aren't uh, who feel often that journalists are pursuing what you would call and what we call in the U.S. gotcha journalism. Whether they're just out to uh, trap them or to you know make a story where one otherwise doesn't exist, um, and I'm not here to say that every journalist in every country in the world always abides by the highest standards. So I, I think it's a complicated picture. What I've stressed to the leaders that I've uh, met with in this position is that I think it's in the interest of democratic leaders to take questions, to sit down for interviews, to be challenged. I think it's healthy for democracy when citizens see their leaders be questioned in that way. And I think if it's a, a sign of effective leadership when uh, politicians show that they're able to handle that sort of pressure and handle that open questioning.